Hey everyone, in this video I want to talk about the companion object in Kotlin. If you've been doing Kotlin or Android development, you've probably seen this in your code. So in this video I want to talk about two of the most common use cases for the companion object. So first off, the mo most common use is if you need a property needed at a class level and not a specific instance. So typically with object-oriented programming, Every object of a class, which means every instance of a class, will have some state associated with it. But if you only need one copy of that information, which is shared across every instance of that class, then that's a perfect use case for a companion object. And you've probably seen this already. In Android programming, you'll typically have a companion object, and inside you'll have a tag which is usually the name of the class. So in this example, your bank account, so the tag is called bank account. And now you can use this tag when you're printing out a log statement. So in this example here, I just have a print line just to prove to you that I don't need to create an instance of bank account. I can directly access tag, and then we can see in the output bank account is printed out as we'd expect. And the other common way of using this is in any method of bank account. For example, in the toString method, I can now reference tag just like any normal variable. And so going back to the main method, if I create a bank account with Rahul, my name, as the constructor parameter here, and I print that out, now, because we've overridden the toString method, I'd expect to see bank account with name Rahul four times. So if we try this out, so we do indeed see bank account with my name four times. We can use companion objects for a lot more than just constants though. For example, we may want every new bank account created to have a globally unique ID. Let's create a private var next ID, which is in the companion object, and we'll use next ID to compute the value of a member variable called account ID. So in the init block, which is the code that gets run every time we create a new bank account, we're going to run this code, which basically says, let's assign the value of account ID to next ID, and also after we do that, let's increment next ID. So every time we create a bank account, we're going to have a unique account ID, and then next ID is shared globally across all bank account objects. So let's test this out by adding this in to the toString method. And if we run the program now, we can see that each bank account has a unique ID by using the shared state of the companion object. So if you're coming from a Java background, you can kind of think of companion object as similar to the static keyword in Java. There is no static in Kotlin, so we, we achieve the same effect using companion objects. Another use case for the companion object is something called the factory pattern, which is a way to perform extra work before an object can be used. Oftentimes, after constructing an object, we may want to do some sort of validation or post-processing before we allow that object to be used. So in those circumstances, what we'll do is make the constructor of that class private. So in our example, you could imagine how we want the bank account before we give it to someone. We want to do some sort of identity validation that this is a legitimate bank account to be opened. And as soon as we do that, you'll notice that we get an error when trying to construct it, the bank account like normal. To get around that, we're going to add a function inside of the companion object. This will take in a name string as a parameter, which is what we'll use in order to actually call the constructor internally. And what we're doing here is after constructing the bank account, we're going to validate the identity of that person. And if they have a valid identity, we'll return the instance of the bank account. Otherwise, we'll return null. So that's why we have a nullable bank account as a return type here. So the validate identity method, you could imagine this actually checking their government ID or going to some database to validate their identity. But just to keep it simple, I'm returning true always here. So it's a Boolean return type, and we'll get back the bank account. So now when a client, when someone actually wants to use our bank account class, the way they would have to do that is call the dot create method, and it takes in this one parameter, same as before. So there's actually no functional change here. I'll run this, and you can see the identical output show up. But the power of the factory pattern is that now you can do any kind of validation or post-processing you need to, rather than relying on the client to call methods in a certain order. You'll sometimes see this in libraries that you might be using, or you can also employ it in your own application. That's all I had for this video. As a review, the most common use cases for a companion object are properties or functions that you need at the class level and not for a specific instance. And second, the factory pattern where you can perform validation before returning 
the object back to the consumer. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. If not, thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.